If you want to learn programming from scratch, then this is the course for you. This is how to learn scratch programming language. The scratch program language is free, fun and easy to learn. Most program languages are text based so a learner has to gain experience writing the code. But Scratch program is easier as it uses blocks. The learner selects blocks, puts them together and runs the program in a simple way, making it the most fun and easiest way to learn programming. You can learn programming completing 10 tasks, follow the videos and we've even got instructions you can download on the web page in the description. Complete each task and you'll learn some valuable programming concepts. Use the videos to help you or even just check your answers. So over the next five weeks, we'll release 10 videos explaining these 10 tasks that will help you learn the Scratch programming language. Make sure you subscribe, then you'll know when the videos are released. So now let's go through the 10 tasks. The first task, we're gonna look at shapes and the first task itself is just to create a square. Now you're new to Scratch, so I'm not really sure how to do this, so you might want to follow the instructions first. But create this square, then look at how you might change the color and the thickness and the background. Once you've created a square, you can look at other shapes. So for example, you might want to make a triangle. You can choose what type of shape you want to make. Just have some fun and try different things. The first task is just to create the square, but you, once you've created the square, you know how to use some blocks and you might want to try different things. For example, how about making a circle? You might want to use the angles here. Anything else that you might want to do is up to you. You can try different things. How about making a house without taking the pen off the paper? The final example draws five squares inside each other. That was task one. Task two is a game. Here we can create the game Pong, where the ball bounces around the screen and bounces on a button that stops it hitting a red line at the bottom, which it touches, it means you lose. You can create your own game, maybe even have a score. That was task two. Now task three is to make a calculator. So we use variables here and we ask the user to put in a plus, minus, multiply, divide. When they enter that, then we ask for the first number and then we ask for a second number and then we calculate, calculate the result. That was task three. Task four, we move on to creating a xylophone. You start to use a bit of logic to complete these tasks here. That was task four. Then we move on to task five, which is animation. Follow the detailed instructions to create this game where we have an octopus that's been chased by a dragon. If the dragon touches the octopus, you can see it says, you've got me, and the octopus looks like it's been burned by the dragon. You can also include some nice sound effects with this game. That was task five. Task six, we have lists. So we introduced the concept of lists that's called arrays in other languages. And in this task, we want to find the common values within two lists. We move on to task seven, where we go through a maze. So in this example, we've already used a maze that's been created already. But in your task, we want you to actually draw a maze using the paint editor. The design and logic you use for task seven, you may use for task eight, where it's quite a similar task, but we create a race. In this example, going through a tunnel. In this task, you need to add time, such as minutes and seconds. That was task eight. Task nine, we look at functions. In this function, when we run it, it tells us if a number is negative, if a number is positive, and if a number is zero. That's within a function. That was task nine. 
Now we move on to task 10. It looks at algorithms. So here we have a task where we have five random numbers in a list. We have a wizard that tells us these numbers. So once he's told us the five numbers, we then find the smallest number by clicking on this find minimum button. So that tells us the minimum. We draw an arrow to show that in the list. Then we click on the sort button to change the numbers into order. So the lowest numbers first, going up to the highest number. You can see sometimes the number are in the correct place, so we don't move them. Otherwise, the wizard says swap. That's the final task. Now, if you're interested in learning program, then make sure you subscribe and then hit that notification bell to know when the videos are going to be released.